the year of 2020. I think we can all agree that last 12 months has seen its fair share of bad news and hardships, although at the same time it had some really great highlights. And what I mean by that are some major spaceflight milestones we reached this year. And this time I'm not talking about SpaceX's Starship. Sure, I do believe the Starship is the most important project that is truly paving the way for the space-based future of our species. There is nothing else out there even close, but with all that being said, it's still deeply in the development stage and while I'm convinced it will eventually succeed, there is a huge amount of things that have to work out first. And there is one space access project where the stakes are really high. This program is absolutely critical for both the future of SpaceX and therefore for the future of the Starship. And as you've probably guessed it, of course I'm talking about NASA and SpaceX's upcoming Crew-1 mission. I'm Radim and welcome to this special episode of the Space Base Show. Today, on November 15, in just a couple of hours, shortly after suiting up in SpaceX's sleek Starman suit, the crew of four badass astronauts Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker and Soichi Noguchi will embark on a historic mission that marks a new era in human spaceflight. At T-3 hours and 22 minutes, they'll walk out of the Neil Armstrong Ops and Checkout building and they'll get into two SpaceX's Tesla Model X crew transportation vehicles. And large part of their travel to the launch pad will be on a public expressway, so some people in cars passing by could be potentially oblivious of the fact that passengers inside those two white Teslas are heading for a very different kind of trip. At 7.27 pm Eastern Time, the nine Merlin engines on the first stage of Falcon 9 ignites and the rocket will blast off with four astronauts strapped inside the Crew Dragon spacecraft. After 12 minutes of intense flight, the zero-g indicator of choice will confirm that the spacecraft made it into orbit. Then the capsule named Resilience will go through a series of rendezvous maneuvers before docking with the International Space Station roughly 8.5 hours after takeoff. Lucky for astronauts, if everything goes well, it will be fully autonomous process, but of course they'll be ready to take over at any time and control the ship manually if they needed to. By the way, SpaceX's docking simulator is still online, so if you haven't tried it out yet, check it out, the link is in the description. This will be a very important milestone for both NASA and SpaceX, as this will be the first operational flight ever for the SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft. Now you might say, ok, that's all good, have we not seen this already 5 months ago? The Demo 2 crew with Bob and Duck and the dinosaur? Good point. Yes, but no. Firstly, we are still not sure what kind of zero-g indicator the crew will have on board, but probably something else than the dinosaur. You know, that is one of the neat traditions of human spaceflight is the zero-g indicator, and we are going to continue that tradition. We're going to save the revealing until we're, uh, the second stage is cut off, and, and hopefully it'll become pretty obvious at that point. The Crew-1 mission will follow a similar trajectory as DM-2 and the capsule itself also looks pretty much identical, but there are way too many differences inside and also purpose of this mission is quite different. So yeah, it's definitely time to get excited all over again. So first up, obviously, this time we have 4 astronauts on board instead of 2, but interestingly enough, this is actually the first time ever in the human history that we put 4 people on the space capsule. SpaceX's DM-2 mission was still a test flight, so having only a limited number of two astronauts slash test pilot on board was an intentional move from NASA. The tremendous success of Demo 2 meant that NASA was able to certify that the Crew Dragon spacecraft is now finally officially ready to roll, which means they can begin with regular crew rotation missions to the ISS, sending their groups of four astronauts every six months or so. Bob and Doug's crew Dragon flight to the ISS back in May lasted about 19 hours, but this time it's gonna be much faster and it will take only about 8.5 hours, so crew will launch and dock with the space station 
all in just one day. That's really fast, but hang on to your heads, because the Russian Soyuz, while people often poking fun at this spacecraft, especially when comparing to the Crew Dragon, but month ago it docked with the ISS only after staggering three hours using its new ultra-fast maneuver involving just two orbits. I mean, Soyuz is no joke in terms of reliability and durability. Don't change something that's not broken, I guess. It's sorta of Nokia 3310 of spaceflight, but back to the iPhone or the Tesla Model 3, if you will, of space vehicles. The Crew-1 mission is the first operational mission, as we mentioned, therefore it involves regular crew rotation that will last roughly six months until sometime in April next year. If everything goes well, then the second operational mission, the Crew-2, including among others Bob Benken's wife, astronaut Megan MacArthur, will take their places. Now, the capsule itself, it's pretty much the same from the outside, but since the demo 2, it also went through some minor changes and tweaks. So let's talk about the most important ones. Firstly, when Bob and Doug returned from their space trip, the heat shield on their Endeavour capsule suffered a little bit more erosion than SpaceX expected. The company said it was nothing life-threatening, but nevertheless, you don't want to play with the fire or superheated plasma in this case, so they decided with the Crew-1 spaceship named Resilience, they better to reinforce the heat shield in some particular areas. Another small surprise came up when Demo-2 capsule deployed a series of its parachutes. Well, most importantly, they deployed, but it turned out to be at lower altitude than planned. Apparently, the sensor measuring the outside air pressure got clocked, so they made some changes here as well. Well, and last but not least, the biggest limitation of the M2 mission were in fact the vehicle's solar panels. The mission was originally slated to last only a couple of weeks, so its 63 days in orbit were really testing its limits. But the solar arrays on the Resilience have been improved significantly, so the spacecraft could eventually stay in the orbit for up to 210 days. Crew-1 astronauts will join three other colleagues already living on the ISS, two Russian cosmonauts Sergei Rizikov and Sergei Kutsverchkov and NASA astronaut Kate Rubins. And this will be another first time ever, as this will bring the total number of ISS roommates to seven occupants. The maximum was usually six people, so that will bring its own challenges. There is plenty of space on the ISS. The problem is, the station is currently short of one crew quarters, so one of the astronauts will have no place to sleep. The space shuttle tradition was that commander usually slept in the cockpit, so the crew one commander Mike Hopkins will most likely have to sleep inside the Dragon Resilient spacecraft while the rest of the crew will sleep inside the ISS. And I don't know about you, but while ISS is a noisy clogged mess full of instruments, laptops and other stuff, the crew Dragon on the other end is kind of piece of art. So if I will be in Mike's shoes, it kind of seems like a nice perk, more like a privilege to be able to sleep there. I'm sure he'll be feeling like a king having it all just for himself. Now you may be asking why they've chosen the name Resilience. So the name Resilience is, is really an honor of uh, the SpaceX and, and the NASA teams. And, and quite frankly, it's an honor of our families, of our colleagues, of our fellow citizens, our international partners that have all uh, shown that same quality, that same characteristics. It really represents the countless people that have contributed to getting the vehicle ready and getting us ready for this mission. And quite frankly, we hope that it's an inspiration, that it shows when you work together, there's no limit to what you can achieve. And it took years of engineering, testing, retesting, having some explosions here and there, then back to the drawing board and testing again. All before NASA finally certified the Crew Dragon with human rating. With spaceflight, uh, unfortunately, there's usually nothing routine about it. You do sometimes get into a rhythm with it, but it's always a, a very dangerous business. You know, you always have to take that very seriously. Human spaceflight is certainly not as routine as flying on the plane. We are not there yet. However, NASA's commercial crew program gave SpaceX this huge opportunity to take this first but crucial step on the journey. And with this first operation of flight, SpaceX is about to become the world's first space liner, providing more or less regular flights to NASA, but they're not stopping there. The company already started selling flight tickets to private customers as well. For example, you've probably heard about Tom Cruise shooting movie in space pretty soon. Although it's true that all of this is pretty much just skimming the surface of what's to come with the Starship, the success of Crew-1 and all the next Crew Dragon missions are steps of the utmost importance for the whole journey. Paths that will hopefully end up one day with fully and rapidly reusable Starship Super Heavy system, ultimately giving humanity the option to travel beyond the Earth and making us multiplanetary species. 
the Dragon Commander Mike Hopkins, Pilot Victor Glover and Mission Specialist Shannon Walker and Soichi Noguchi are part of a really exciting space trip and its purpose goes far beyond individual mission with direct implications for SpaceX, Starship and therefore our future presence in space. Space exploration is important uh, for a number of reasons. It is important for humanity in terms of the science and engineering benefits it brings. It is important for understanding the universe and our place in it. And I think it's important for the world to work, work together on common goals. So go resilience and Godspeed crew one. Okay, that's all I have for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe, hit the like button and also click on the notification bell. The usual Space Base News episode is gonna be out in a few days. I just thought this Special Crew 1 mission deserves a special video, so I hope you like it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.